So I'm sitting here with Chris Danzi, and we we covered in a previous video some important concepts. Why don't you take us through a brief overview of those concepts that we covered? Well, there were really two main areas that we thought were super important to think about today. The first one was this idea of privacy versus empowerment. Mm -hmm. I mean, where does your privacy end and begin versus what could you actually empower yourself with? And the second things were this idea of maybe tech dependency versus tech enablement. And the idea is, are you tech dependent? Do you need a GPS or are you enabled by it? Can you use it to do something interesting? Right, and what we're gonna talk about now is you're gonna show us how you take these terms and make them positive. So the enablement aspect and the empowerment it's aspect. One o'clock. So that's actually the first thing I'm gonna talk about is you'll notice that my computer just said to me, it's one o'clock. Yes. So one of the things I'm sure you guys have noticed is when you have clocks on your computers, you're always looking at them, right? What time is it, what time is it? So kind of my first little tip we didn't even schedule for this video was remove the clocks from your screens and have your computers tell you or vibrate when the time changes. Okay. It's one of those kind of little micro tips. Okay, so you just have to wait. You don't ever have to look at it. You just know you're Most appointments are on the hour. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That's true. So what I was thinking, Sean, was there's a lot we could unpack thinking about data, right? Because there's, there's so much of it out there. But the reality is we have to make it simple for people. Yeah. So I want to unpack privacy and data by looking at this stack. So the first layer on kind of our, our data of our world is time. Everything happens when. Everything happens at some time. The second layer is really easy. That's location. Everything happens at some time, some place. The third layer that everyone has to deal with is activity. This one's a little tricky because you're always someplace at some time, but you're doing something. Mm -hmm. And that's either sitting, standing, walking, driving. So invo activity involves moving. Or sitting with Chris Dancy at or a table. Or, and then and the next layer up would be behavior. So behaviors are what you're doing while you're sitting, walking, standing someplace at some time. That could be listening to music like Spotify. That could be watching YouTube, binge watching, which I do a little too much um, uh, in, a, in a calendar appointment. And above that, you've got what most people think of when they think of health, health, biology. Right. And that's your sleeping, your nutrition. And then finally, the top layer, the, the, the creme de la creme, environment. How hot is it? How bright is it? How loud is it, right? Yeah. So if I were to try to unpack all of that in one video, it'd be too much. So we're gonna look at these, this stack in three specific areas, three really simple areas. Stuff you're probably already doing, it'll be phase one. An aggregator that'll take different parts of that stack and put them together. That'll be phase two. And then I'm thinking a little kung fu. Yeah. yeah. Little, some advanced. Some little advanced magic. quantified self, a little cyborg 101, biohacker realness. <laughs> no? Yes. Okay. I'm all for it. Let's okay. do that. Let's right. do that. Okay, so first of all, it's uh, what, what people are probably doing was the first. Well, first off, people aren't going to be used to it unless there's an edit, so we should probably edit here. No, I'm just okay. kidding. Do uh, you ever notice YouTube? Everything's edited. Um, so the first thing for the, for the first phase one, we're going to look at just single point apps. These are things that are already tracking you that you might find some value in. Right. So the first one I'm going to use is location because we know the clock is running, but yes. the location isn't. So we all know that a lot of these apps will ask you for your location, but we never think about the power of location. So one of the apps I've been using the longest for location is Foursquare. Right. Um, Foursquare broke off, they call it Swarm now. Um, and what it allows me to do when I enter it is just come in here and see where I'm at and check into someplace new. Mm -hmm. Now when I check in, I'm gonna be offered a tip, if there is a tip. So right now, in this case, it tells me that a lady named Natalie is the mayor. Natalie is the mayor. Natalie is the I mayor. I need to challenge that. You need to challenge that. You need that. to challenge that. But more importantly, I'm gonna be able to see where I've spent my time. What I like about this is it's low friction. So if I forgot something, you can see it automatically put it in here for me. So mm -hmm. I can come in here and say, yep, I absolutely was there yesterday and hit check. Okay. The power of location is you can suddenly then go inside here and see how you've spent your time. So I can see that I've got uh, 96 different categories, about 10,000 different check-ins. I can see the different places I've visited, but more importantly, I can see them on a map. So if you were someplace that you really enjoyed and you wanted to visit again, you could open up the map, go right in and take a look at it. Yeah. So location is a super powerful way already being tracked. If you're a Google user on Android, it's, it's taking happening. care of it for you. It's happening, yeah. And some people think, well, I should just disable that. I did. Did you? I did. Why? My reflex action, yeah. which might change after spending a few days with you, Chris, yeah. but my reflex action was to shut it off so that Google wouldn't know where I've been. And I think that's, uh, uh, especially for younger people and people who are vulnerable, people who I think safety is a primary concern. That's yeah. super important. Very important for me. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're probably. But uh, but for most of us, I think if you're living a, a pretty active life, there's value in two. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to search and say, when's the last time I was here? Yeah. Or what did I eat last time I was here? Or who was I with? Well, even one of the questions that you posed uh, when, during our discussions was, uh, where were you last Monday? And mm -hmm. I would not be able to answer that. And uh, uh, maybe maybe something is in my diary uh, or a calendar somewhere, but I wouldn't be able to answer that. It's a, it's unknown to me. So There is this interesting paradigm shift of what we're seeing today is a lot of data is being used as cover. Mm -hmm. Like, I couldn't have done that because mm -hmm. here's my data. Mm -hmm. And I, I do think there's something powerful to that. Uh, but again, I, the point here I'm trying to make is there's a real difference between feeling victimized by these systems watching you and yes. being empowered by them. Right. And uh, it's flipping the script. It's basically. flipping the script. You know, we, we've called this for a, you know, over 15 years the quantified self. But beyond location, I mean, we've got places that was level two on our chart. Uh, but level, we, we might want to move up. And, right. and something that all phones are doing now is they're all kind of watching our steps. They're all kind of watching uh, our, our nutrition if we log our food. They're starting to watch our sleep. Heartbeats. Heartbeats. So uh, Android calls this um, uh, Google Fit right. is what it's called in the Android ecosystem. And in the Apple ecosystem, they call it Apple Health. So I thought for a second point, now again, these are just simple apps you can do every day, Google if you have a phone, but for health, I thought we'd go ahead and come in here and take a look at mine because, well, I should have should have behaved a little bit better before this video. Yeah, come on, Chris. <laughs> but we can see do. here that these are all the things that health is gonna show us that I'm doing, right? Mm. So I've got everything from my energy, my steps, how, how many times I've stood today, my heart rate, my heart rate variability, how much sugar, that's the ice cream I just had, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. calories, exercise minutes, uh, my average uh, heart rate, water consumption, caffeine, I'm a little jittery, good sleep, eight hours. So again, low friction happening in the background, yeah. whether you want to or not. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wear an Apple Watch, the phone's keeping track of it for you. Something interesting you could do with just your health app is, one of the things I like to pay attention to is if I've had a really rough night of sleep, sometimes I don't want to know because that'll taint my ability to behave all day long. I, I didn't sleep well, I have an excuse. But it's often a good time, so if you notice you've been particularly productive at work, because God, I got a lot done today. You know that good feeling? Yeah. Go back and see. How did you sleep? What did you eat? What were the factors that led to this? Exactly. So I think health is one of those single point data collectors like location that's super easy. It's on all modern phones mm -hmm. and you can be empowered by it. Okay but maybe not, you know, like I said, be careful with kids yes. and older people. I, I guess you have to figure out a responsible way to use it. And you have to, I think the important thing is you also have to understand what, what it is. And then, then you can make, your, make uh, good choices about how Absolutely. you're gonna empower and enable. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, even my dog has a tracker. <laughs> <laughs> and when it, no, when I'm away, I get messages if my uh, if my partner doesn't walk him. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and, hey. and I'm like, yeah, hey, can you please walk the dog? You know, he's dying there. Um, uh, so the next thing that kind of so that's that's the simple stuff people yeah. can use every single day. Yeah. Uh, but the next thing I want to talk about is this idea of aggregators. So now, in the past two years, it's become wildly easy to have your life kind of summed up for you. Maybe you don't want to do all the things I did 10, 15 years ago to figure out who you are and what you value. You just want to have it done for you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go over two specific ag aggregators for you guys to try at home. And there'll be links down below to all of these things if you want to try them out. Um, one is a little bit simpler. That's where we're going to start. One's a little bit more... Mm, Tricky. Robust. It's a little robust. bit more robust. It's a little bit... It's to show you more of your life. Okay. So the first thing is I want to take the simple paradigm we just talked about. Uh, which was low friction data collection and places and activity. Are you walking, standing, running? And, and the first app we're gonna talk about is Lifecycle. Sounds familiar, right? Lifecycle, yeah, yeah, all right? Yeah. So with Lifecycle, what I like about that is it doesn't get into the hard numbers. What it does is it allows you to casually see your day in a donut. Right. So how much time you slept, how much time you traveled, how much time you were at the office. Very simple, big, broad donut you've got here. Mm -hmm. What I like about this is you could do the normal stuff like I was traveling or I was at work or you could do what I do. So what I do is I often will come in here and place feelings on these things. So instead of labeling this at work, I labeled it on stage. Oh, okay. Right. Because the idea is when I came to meet with you guys today, I had to be rested. Yes. I, a little bit. <laughs> had to be pleasant. Yes. Maybe. Please, Chris, be pleasant. Please, please. Yeah. I mean well. Yeah. Uh, get it? I mean well. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, but I also could label this other things. So I have mm. things I value in here. So instead of that, I might want to say um, friends. 
So right. spending time with friends is something I track. Yeah. So if you got to lunch with your friends, you could log it lunch, but log it friends. Yeah. What's great about this, Sean, is at the end of the month, when you come in and you get a report, it'll automatically tell you what's changed. Wow. So you're spending more time with your family, are you spending more time with your friends, where are you spending that time? One of the things I log is maybe talking to strangers. I love talking to yeah. strangers because it gets me out of my head. Okay. Right? So uh, this you will just walk up to a strange person, a stranger in the street and say, hey, what's happening? Yeah, I will. Okay. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I really love doing it because, you know, we all have seen how crazy it is out there. People are just overwhelmed. They're sometimes depressed. Mm. They get stuck in their own head. Mm. And I'm no different. Mm. And the only way I can get out of my head is to talk to someone. Yeah, and you have that interaction and then... Yeah. My favorite thing is uh, people who serve you food at restaurants. So again, this is a very simple app that you can watch day to day to see kind of how your weeks, days, and time is spent. Mm. If you're striving for more work-life integration instead of work-life balance, this is one possible way to do that. Yeah. So the Lifecycle app. The next app though, that's a little bit heavier on the okay. integration tip. Okay. So the next one is an app that's been around for about three years called Gyroscope. Okay. So what Gyroscope, and by the way, all these apps so far, free, mm -hmm. because you're paying with? Your data. There you go. So we're very upfront about that. Yeah, we, yeah. Okay. But it's a reality. Should we do the, da the data uh, face stroke? Paying with your data. Paying with your data. So with Gyroscope, you'll notice when we come in here, it shows me today, it shows me how much I slept, mm -hmm. the different apps I've used today. So I've spent 65 minutes in Airtable, 13 minutes in Finder, 10 minutes in Missive Email, and eight minutes in YouTube. You'll notice the YouTube is red. Yeah. That's because I don't value that time. Okay. You'll notice the email is white. That's because I, I have to do that. Yeah. The things that are green are things I value. Okay. So tools that involve I like creation. That. I like that categorization of how am I spending my time. Right? Yeah. Things and that I have to do, to... things that I don't want to do, and things that I really love doing. Yeah. Um, and then I've kind of got uh, my total sleep for the day, how much time I've spent in front of a screen, mm -hmm. my heart rate for the day, and my heart rate variability for the day. So I've had a low of 45 beats per minute, a high of 74. I'll be honest with you, not an active day recording videos. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, how much food I've consumed for the day, mm -hmm. and then any songs I've listened to for the day. So you okay. can see I've listened to- 21 songs already. Right, Katrina and the Waves, Journey, Brian Adams, Steve Perry, right? Mm -hmm. So just so you know, this is my get in a good mood playlist, right? Okay. So what's really great about Gyroscope is you'd think, well, how did all that information get in there? Yeah. Most of it got automatically aggregated and rolled up just by using my phone normally. Okay, so you create a connection between other apps on your phone and then it brings in that data automatically and collates it into the dashboard. This that beautiful you dashboard, you don't need to do anything wow. too. So if I come in here, I can even click on the settings for it. I go ahead and click that and go in and see my activity for the week. Yeah. I get an overall health score, so how am I feeling? Am I, is, my, is my health doing Is that really out of well? 100 or what is that? It's out of 100, so right now I'm at 79 because I have not meditated today. Okay. Are you gonna? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Depends on how stressed I get, I'm just kidding. I, I, I try we'll to, how stressed we can I, make I, you. I try to meditate whether I get stressed or not. <laughs> um, let me go ahead. So this whole application, then you can add different uh, apps you want to sync with. So I'm gonna come in here and say, what apps do we want to sync with? Mm -hmm. We can sync with, uh, for our health, Apple Health or Google Fit. We, if you wear an Apple Watch, an Aura Ring, you can do that. If you like to bike, you can integrate with Strava, Fitbit, Garmin. What social apps do you use? So it can automatically grab photos and even your DNA. Okay, so it's, from 23andMe, I see. Yep. Have all, you done, you've done that so that you've got that data and you bring it into yeah, yeah. Gyroscope. Wow. Yeah, well, you know, and days that are certain, I'm, one of the things I'm sensitive to is melanoma. Okay. So on days that are above 6 UV, yeah. I get alerts. Okay, so be careful. To wear sunscreen out. and stay out of the sun. Okay, be yeah. careful outside today. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but that makes sense. So from here, we can jump over and look at this screen. So this is amazing. This shows me kind of, and anyone, you can go to data.chrisdancy.com and see this right now. Yeah, literally. Right now. Right now, regardless of when you're watching this video. Okay. Uh, it's like a Data Truman show. <laughs> so, so from here, I can go ahead and see how my week is going. There's Monday, the t Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. It shows me kind of where I was spending my time. There's 19 minutes walking. There's 33 minutes walking. Mm -hmm. I can zoom in on that then and come in here and see I started out at Boston Airport, ended up in Spain. It looks like I was out on a scooter with some friends, yeah. see where I went. And then from there, I can even jump in a little bit further and start to see trends. Okay. So show me my weather versus my steps. Show me my sleep versus the weather. And that's where you're really putting the data together to get information. Exactly. Yeah. So data, information, knowledge, yeah. wisdom. wisdom. Yeah.
right? So this is really amazing because this helps me to say, what is it that makes, is there a certain weather condition that's good for sleep? Mm -hmm. Is there a certain amount of activity? And sure enough, all those metrics are there. This is a completely simple and easy to use aggregator. You can set it up from here. Okay. So just like life cycle, very simple, just where are you and how are you feeling? Mm -hmm. This one really brings it together. Yeah. So that's phase two. Right. All of your favorite applications, all of the things you use every day, but making and empowering you. With making it. that data useful to you and not just to big organizations yeah. or advertisers out yeah, there. Yeah. Okay. Can I show you one more I wasn't planning to? Definitely. Okay. Definitely. So this is another one, it's called Rescue Time. So this is like health or gyroscope, but for your work. Uh -huh. So if you want to see what types of applications you're using, it watches you in the background and it shows me 52% of my time today has been in business applications. Okay. Uh, 24 minutes of my uh, time has been spent in utilities, 10% of my time in scheduling, and, and nine minutes in 8% uh, in entertainment. So again, this just runs in the background, watches how you're using your apps, and gives you some uh, views. Yeah. Some people have trouble with being focused. Yes. So this is one of those things that can... Wouldn't know who those people would be. <laughs> so this is one of those apps that'll actually, you can set focus time, it'll block right. out everything for you. Okay, Yeah. that's pretty cool. So the last thing I want to talk about is kind of the Kung Fu. Okay. So, you know, you can have a single point aggregator, picking up your location or your health. You can have uh, a system like gyroscope or life, cycle recording everything mm -hmm. or you might want to do something yourself something kind of makerish yeah you know which i think a lot of people will want to do you think yeah i, I think, think so. so i think so. i think it gives people more control of exactly how or what they what they end up doing yeah and it's, it's empowerment is control yeah. See? Yeah. so there are a lot of things we could record about our lives but i thought i'd pick something that was kind of useful for all of us okay. the biggest problem i have at work is email I, I don't know what it is. People, I think some people get paid to send email. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. They get paid by the email. Yeah, they seem to be pro professional email sales. Yeah, yeah. And even this kind of reply to all. Who are these people? Don't reply to all. Wait a minute. Reply to all with just thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what are you even doing? I don't know. You I just need... waited, wasted 15 people's time saying thank okay. you. I know. I need an old priest on young priest. The power of Christ. Okay. So, exorcist. <laughs> so what I thought we would do is we need to show how much email we get in a day. Yeah. We want to be able to record it. The other thing, I want to search it and see kind of patterns of email. So what I thought we'd do is build a system that every time we get an email, it creates a copy in our maybe calendar. Okay. What I like about calendars as data repositories is they're naturally linear in time. Mm -hmm. They go backwards, they go forwards, all right? They're kind of interesting little beasts. The other thing is they're easy to connect to. Mm. And finally, you can hide them because you can have one calendar for emails, one calendar, maybe every time you create a Word document. Right. Right? Maybe every time you take a screenshot. So you could have a whole series of calendars just with how much work you're doing all day long, and you'll be able to search your work history, kind of like a timeline for your productivity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for the calendar, what we're going to do in this hack is we're going to use an application. There's two main ones. There's IFTTT. Right. They are not sponsoring this, but they should. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah and um, Zapier. Zapier. What I like about Zapier, and I think most of our audience is probably enterprise or business, is really fine-grained tools. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump right into Zapier here. I'm gonna go ahead and get to my Zapier page. From here, I can go ahead and just say, let's make a zap. Zaps are the little triggers that say, move this to that. Okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is says, what zap do you wanna trigger on? I'm gonna say I'm gonna trigger on email. Mm -hmm. And again, maybe I wanna do all my Slack messages. You saw Slack there. Yeah. And then, what do you think? Should we do new email? Let's do new email. And what's really great about this is you could just also log emails from certain people. Like okay. maybe you just want emails from your boss. Right. right. How many emails is my boss Take sending? Take that me? into your review. You How can I work when you're sending me 12 emails a day? You heard, boss. It, here. You heard it here first. So I'm going to go ahead and select. Next, I'm not going to pick any special labels because we just want all these emails. We're not going to pick on our boss yeah, just, just yet. No. <laughs> Now it's going to go through, it's going to query my entire mail, and it's mm -hmm. going to pull up some samples. What I like about this querying is, if you don't know where your data is, like you don't know what field location is in or what field body, it'll show you. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click continue. Next, it's going to say, hey, you're almost done, but you haven't told us what to do with your data. Mm -hmm. we, need, we need something to do. Like if we were Facebook, we'd know what to do. Yeah. We'd, we'd sell it. We'd just sell the data. Okay, but instead, we're going to go ahead we're and we're going to the data. We're gonna point this to Google Calendar. Mm -hmm. Now, what I really like to do is you could just point this to Slack, and every time you get an email from someone, just Slack it back to them. But instead, I'm going to go ahead and say, create a detailed event. That's a little passive aggressive. A little passive aggressive <laughs> data manipulation. We're okay with that. And we're going to say, save and continue. 
And now it's gonna go through and now I can do the fun stuff. So mm. now I'm gonna say what calendar I wanna write this to. So as you can see, I've got a bunch of different calendars here. I've got, for me, I, I keep track of anniversaries on a separate calendar than holidays yeah. or family. Yeah. So I'm gonna select my email calendar. It's a calendar actually showing me all the emails I'm getting. Then I'm gonna say, what do I want the summary of that calendar event to be? And I'll make the summary just the subject line. Mm -hmm. And in the body of the calendar event, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe select the date of the email. The next thing I wanna do is select the body of the email. Okay. And I'm just gonna do plain text because no one needs HTML in their life. Yeah, right. Not yeah. here. Not here, not like this. And then next, we're not gonna do any type of location. Now for the start date and time, you can see it's a required field. Yeah. So what field from our email should we use for our date and time and our calendar? <clears throat> Maybe date and time. So that would be a good... Uh... Right. <laughs> might, might be a good, good guess. Might be a good guess. Yeah. Because it, it would be senseless to show emails in the middle of the night. So I could go down, I could say, you know, look for this, yeah. how many, I could actually assign a color to it, but I'm going to skip all that good stuff. A lot, of, a lot of good options there, though. You can right. really build a lot of conditions and a lot of... Totally. Very flexible. Lots of conditions. Maybe every third email, or once you get seven emails from yeah. HR, just walk in and say, fire me. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Now, that would be my, uh, <laughs> okay. So uh, next it's gonna show me a sample. So let's say here, we're gonna put in your email calendar. This is gonna be the summary of the event. Okay. And, we're, and you could even put it in here like email subject. You could like give it some mm. labels. Mm. With that, I'm gonna come down here and say, send a test to Google Calendar. Next it's gonna go a little to the gremlins, ignore it there and see that's, that's done. And we're gonna name this then. We're gonna call it too much work email. We'll call this. Yeah. And we'll hit finish. Now, if we go over to our Google Calendar, We'll go ahead and turn this zap on for later. We will come in here and sure enough, there's our appointment. Okay. And what's great about this is we can toggle this entire calendar off by yeah. coming down here and just saying, I don't want to see all my emails. Yeah. But if I do, if I'm looking at my email usage, I can just turn that one on or... And what's really nice about this is maybe you're spending a lot of time after hours answering and receiving email. Yeah. Maybe you're, you know, you, you don't get a lunch time. Yeah. Again, the power of being able to visualize whether it's your steps, your work, even your social media use or binge watching television, every time you watch a Netflix show, have it right to a calendar, yeah. helps you start to understand what you value and focus on those things. Because once you have the data, you can make rules to remind you not to. Yeah, yeah. Right. Or conversely, rules yeah. to make you do something that you may be not doing enough, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, so for example, some of the things I like to do is I like to set up rules for when I go to the grocery store to remember to be nice to people. Yeah. <laughs> like when I walk in the door. Yeah. So there are lots of ways I think we can be very deliberate, whether it's simple, one-to-one -one applications like Foursquare or Google to keep yeah. track of our places, aggregators for our health, right, and or our time, and then finding these very custom solutions. Yeah, it's about being empowered. Yeah, it's making about your own decisions, choosing your own. Uh, yeah, yeah. Data criteria. autonomy. Okay. Because at the end of the day, the only job we have to do in the future is manage how we treat ourselves and others. Yeah. And if we're not thinking about how we're treating ourselves, we're not really in any place to be good to others. Yeah. Amazing, Chris. Thank you very much for that. No, I'm so much fun to be here, and I really appreciate you guys taking time to make this video with me and helping me monitor my own life. Yeah, yeah. We, we, that's what we do. We uh, we monitor things. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Chris, and people subscribe, join the channel, and we'll see you next. And time. hit the bell icon. Apparently, that's super Definitely important. Definitely hit the bell icon. You can ring my bell. Ring my bell. My bell. Ding a ring. No. No, no. Right, we're getting no. we're getting looks no. from people. No. Too stupid. Bye. <laughs>